Welcome to another edition of Three Men in a Blog. And this week it's not our First Minister's Questions Review. Uh, they are on holiday. We're still here. However, it's been a, a very interesting week and a very positive week for the Yes campaign. Um, I think it was a, a food shot uh, report issued by the UK government. No sooner, in fact, before that was even uh, released, uh, the principal legal advisor said all the wrong things as far as they were concerned. Uh, on top of that, there's been a poll, which has been a rather positive one for the Yes campaign. And I'll leave the rest of the items that uh, I've highlighted this week to my fellow guests, Phil Attridge, Murray Stewart, and of course my name's Stuart Lockett. I'll start with uh, Phil, because you can summarise a little bit of um, your week, which will, I'm sure Norrie's been much more involved, so we're gonna, we can go in from a sort of perspective of what you've been what you can read this week. Um, I've been reading, well, a lot of summaries, more than this, we've been working on having to read the whole papers, but just when you were talking about the, the poll, that's the 18 to 24s, which is now 58%, um, and since 2011, that's almost doubled. Uh, people have been calling for a, a poll, if possible, at 16 to 17 year olds to see be voting as where well. they are. Um, it's, the whole thing is getting quite interesting. This, this report from well, I was going to say for the UK, from England, um, which, again, it's just an opinion. I mean, they're all going to have reports, but these are all opinions from experts. And the more experts you get, the more different opinions you get. But some of the words which were talking about earlier, which was the word that Scotland was extinguished, um, which is a legal term, but doesn't sound very good, and it's, I'm quite sure that the Yes campaign will use that. But it's also so much full of that, well, that term you use, fudmongering. You know, the, the whole fear, uncertainty, doubt. The Scotland is doomed. We're doomed, all doomed. If, uh, if they go down, down that road. And then we've got the report um, from the other side, the economic, macroeconomic, which well, basically, which anybody with just even a minimal amount of common sense will tell you Scotland, five million people. Denmark, four odd million people, Norway, five million people, five million people in Finland, New Zealand. You know, yeah, these are all medium sized countries. All small, medium sized countries. Um, what's the problem with Scotland? I mean, I think the main problem with Scotland is um, that there's an awful lot of Scots up here that actually believe this garbage. You know, that anyway, this, that, that, that report was no. um, by the First Minister's Committee of Economic Experts. Perhaps that's not an official name, but it's also known as a led by Crawford Beveridge, who used to be in charge of a Scottish enterprise. And the other major uh, contributor was Joseph Stiglitz, who's a Nobel laureate economic economist in America. He too was on the First Minister's panel of economic experts. But is that, the, the, the thing that anno annoys me is that, I said, it's that fudmongering. The whole point is, if you want to remain in the UK, that's fine. I mean, it is, do you, don't you? That's the whole point, to get a grown-up debate about it. But it's all, I want to hear positives from both sides. And you want to hear positive reasons for being remaining a member of the UK. Not that we're all doomed if we don't. And, and that's basically it. Ludicrous arguments like having to renegotiate 14,000 treaties. And there was that Faulkner, Tony Blair's ex-roommate and um, partner in crime, I should imagine, from one of them, was sitting there, smirking away. And it's this... I'm sorry, but if people out there don't realise up here, uh, the term is they're taking the piss. I'll take that as a professional opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, did you, what kind of a week have you seen? Well, <coughs> Monday, I basically spent all of the documentation, both the UK document and the Scottish government document. You were a glutton for punishment. Yeah. Well, I have to say the UK government document is fairly straightforward. Um, it's not particularly complicated. The Scottish government document is went into a lot more depth. What really amazed me, as I showered in the morning, um, the UK most eminent international legal expert, Crawford, Crawford, Professor Crawford, Professor Crawford, he led the, uh, um, was, on radio, was on radio <laughs> for saying, well, actually the Scottish government's time scale of 18 months is totally reasonable, don't see why that shouldn't work. Um, can't see them having a problem getting into the UN. Don't see why that shouldn't work. And the EU, well, as they already cover uh, all the laws and are a member of the EU, don't see that being a problem. 
So basically, all the arguments of the previous two weeks from the No campaign were blown out of the water by the UK government, well, employing an honest academic. <laughs> That's honest funny. academic. If you, if you employ an academic body, you get something closer to the truth. If you pay an actor, lawyer, well, you get the answer you want. That'll be the last one and a half then, won't you? The, the big, the big sort of emotional thing was, as Phil mentioned earlier, this idea that um, the the academic has the on the after the Act of Union. If essentially, when the Act of Union was signed in 1707, Scotland was subsumed into England, England which almost which immediately on signature became the, the United Kingdom. So. That didn't please a lot of people because the way it read was that essentially Scotland had been colonised. Well, that part's true. The word was extinguished that everybody else was using. The unfortunate thing about it is Twitter being Twitter and the papers being the papers, it was a legal opinion and essentially has precedent and all the rest of it. The strength, the, the strong argument that comes out of that from the Scottish government is. That, right, okay, if we were subsumed, we were basically a colony, therefore we'll walk away and you can keep all the national debt, mate. So that, that's the plus side of that. Yes, and didn't have to rush off, didn't Michael Moore, um, on Monday lunchtime, Michael Moore, the Scottish Secretary of State, had to rush off and then issue uh, another press release saying, oh no, oh no, um, you can't, ha you can't, ha you can't uh, leave without your share of the debts. Which is not... <coughs> yes. makes sense, it? What, what I'd like to do is just read you the first line of the three options in that particular paper. That's the UK government case. Three possible outcomes for the status of Scotland and the RUK in international law following Scottish independence are as follows. Most likely, please note, most likely, the RUK would be considered the continuer of the UK for all international purposes and Scotland would be a new state. What that in effect means Scotland would have to rejoin NATO, rejoin the EU, rejoin them. basically mm -hmm. all the treaties, all that stuff. Some states have dissolved into entirely new states, which means basically both states would have to renegotiate their position. This is point two. Point two, sorry, with the EU, the UN, etc., etc. The third option, which is the option that terrifies the UK government, is revision to a previous independent state as pre-1707. Because effectively that would allow Scotland to walk away. We wouldn't have to take debt with us. We would simply go, you keep all the stuff you've got, we'll keep all the stuff we've got. and we'll keep everything in Scotland. Bye. <laughs> this, we'd also have the, the nuclear weapons and then they wouldn't belong to them. You mean Scotland well, would be on the security oh, technology assets? Could well, be the, the, the real problem, the, this, this terrifies Westminster, it must do. Because effectively all the bargaining, bargaining chips fall into Scotland's pocket at that point. And after the No campaign has been saying 14,000 treaties to renegotiate, we would have all those treaties that were still live to renegotiate and we need to join, but we wouldn't have nearly four billion a year to pay in interest on national debt. Well look at that, I think mm -hmm. uh, my impression following that, that report was, and I mentioned it before we actually started recording, is that uh, when it comes to negotiation, there is always a possibility that uh, Scotland could uh, offer a number of options to the RUK when we, after a yes vote. It would appear to me that the most dearly held position that our UK really, really want about all other things is the seat, the permanent seat on the Security Council of the United Nations. Now, when you can recognize in your opponent if you're negotiating, and you can see what they want the most, that becomes a huge weakness. And they're so desperate to hang on to that position, I can't see them. They'll, they'll, they'll give away all kinds of stuff. I don't think it's as simple as that, because America are going to want them there as well. And yeah. America's also going to want the nuclear deterrent here. So we'll, we'll, the, the Americans, um, I have absolutely no doubt, there's well, lots well, and well, lots of presidents. The Americans will be, if they're not now, and I've no doubt they are, interfering in our internal 
politics here, but I mean, the soft power and, and, and hard power. Well, and I, the soft power argument is that they might also want to offer Scotland something. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, it's too simplistic to me simply to say that that's the greatest bargain in Chip on Earth. I don't think it is. There, there are too many enemies, there are too many subtle ways to undermine the new, a new nation if you don't tell the line on that one. I mean, we're going to have Trident for 10, 20 years. That's the best case scenario. Well, I don't know. I can't see them. I mean, if you want, everything the SNP say involves the word safely. Yeah. So yeah. we want Trident removed as soon as possible and safely. Well, according to CND, it could be done in less than two years. <laughs> yeah. Well, well they did it. They already take the weapons to all put put every year. Where do you put the active submarines? Well, the you submarines aren't the problem, it's the nuclear bombs. No. They're the problem. Yeah, but the submarines carry them, so they've got to argue That's that true, they, 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 could move safe to they could move the submarines to Georgia. There's a base in the US where they, they could be based. But it's the nuclear warheads that have to go somewhere else. Because that's what's exp so expensive, building a, a cool port where they store the nuclear mm -hmm. weapons. But bear in mind, I've driven past that, that uh, convoy mm. on the M6. I don't know how many times it goes down. It goes from mm. Coolport, not Vaseline, Coolport, which is around the other side, down to Alder Aldermaston, I don't know how many times a year with the warheads for um, refurbishment. The, the CND report was decommissioning in two years, um, not getting rid of the actual basement team. So they're significantly longer. Well, as long as the, that, that, as long the, as point, the warheads the point are I'm making is that. <clears throat> Nobody should be pushing the Scottish government on timescales for this because that makes it a much more powerful bargaining chip. They turn around to America and they say, look, we're, we're not going to chase this out here until you're ready. You know, yeah. if we're going to have a... That's the reality. It, it's here until mm. they actually build uh, the replacement. It's no, the real, real politics, so I, I mean, it's going to be here for a generation. Now. But then the MOD have already stated that it's unacceptable to have this base in England. Because in the event LP. of an accident, <coughs> well, the, the casualties of citizens of England would be unacceptable. It would be Whereas unacceptable. To, wipe out, to wipe out central Scotland it would be unacceptable <laughs> until the point that it's acceptable. Yes, I mean, it's a bit like, it's a bit like the, the, there's almost no country in the world will come out officially and support Scottish independence because diplomatically it's impossible. Even countries that would, up, that would turn, immediately be sympathetic and recognise a Scotland immediately after the yesterday. However, I notice Ireland has hosted a, what was that, a press conference or was something that Ireland is. Oh, Ireland's the chap is the president, presidency of the EU at the moment. It was the Salmond. Salmond addressed 27 EU member states' representatives. Well, and Nicola Sturgeon was in, 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 went to Dublin recently. Is that the no, occasion? No, this was Alex Salmond about a month ago, because right. that's the speech that Darling is about to make. Um, what is wrong with that man? Oh, you've changed tack now. Oh, Mr. Oh, please, what, what is the wrong with the guy? If you hit your, side, your, hand, your thumb with a hammer, you stop using a hammer. He's done it again today. Headline in the Times. All your relations will become foreign. All your family will be foreign. Oh, no. If you're independent. I mean, came in and we spoke about it. My sister-in-law, I've got two sister-in-laws. One is Australian-French, one is Spanish. They didn't become foreign. They became members of the family when they married into it. It doesn't matter what foreign you, country nationality they have. You don't move relations further away. You move from close. Well, it's the same with me. I've only it's got it's English grandchildren. It doesn't make it any it's different from me. These are my family. Can I be positive? Yes. Well, what else they you, are. What else would you expect from a pompous, self-opinionated us? Really? Is he an idiot? Um, he does a pretty good impersonation sometimes. I mean, if you listen to that bit where the whole point was, there's no turning back. It's the and then, not ten minutes later, if you get the pound. Basically, we will be back. So hang on, is it one or is it the yeah, other? Yeah. Um, I notice he's got his ratings he are collapsed. In a appropriate person has to play. No, has he no relations that live in a foreign country that not be in England? Is there nobody in his family went to America, Australia, Canada, or whatever? Mm. Are they so well settled? Are they so much in with the elite that they never had to leave Scotland? He, he's not alone, actually, when you on, on his own when you look at the... The, 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 the no campaign. 
Um, and if you have a look at them, I mean, what a motley bunch, really. Um, it would help if they put people in there that actually were, were looking for something intelligent, something consistent to say, something positive. But again, it's all that we're all doomed. And I they just think of something, this will... Okay, on the countdown, we've all raised, our, we've all, our voices have all gone, it's about to, I'm oh, going to stop talking about It's frustrating. Yes, but I know, I know, but as long as we're talking that kind of pitch of voice, I know. That it comes across as that we've not, nothing relevant to that say. That we're rich in a I know. However, <laughs> um, okay, well, let's see if you can, we'll start off with, back to Norwich. To sum up the week, rather than, the, um, I mean, where, where do you see, I mean, I, as I, I opened this su the suggestion, I think the positive campaign, sorry, the, the yes campaign is a very positive week generally speaking. Um, is that, would you agree with that? Yeah. Um, essentially, a lot of statements made by the No Campaign have had their foundation blown away. Um, the report from the UK government was probably more useful to the Yes Campaign mm. than their own report. It was the same in January when, when they issued their first, whatever it was, uh, after uh, the end of the year. for independence. But, oh yeah, their pound for independence. Really, do they not... I thought that, that in London they had the money for focus groups. Do they not? Look at this. What are the opposition going to say about this? Do they not have any to analyse what they're about to I, say? I actually think I'm, I'm, become, I'm becoming much, much more aware. I mean, the opposition to a lot of these reports appears to be almost crowdsourced on the internet. Every time a report comes out, there's an original idea that's picked up. The spin, that I there's a spin doctor's press release, and then there's the facts afterwards. You know, well, it's not even that. It's, I mean, the, the good one was the extinguishing of Scotland. I mean, I read it, and I, I read it in legalese and took it to be legalese, mm -hmm. and just presumed that was the expression that was used. Next thing, the spin, the, the Yes campaign, not the Yes campaign, sorry, the, the, the SNP cybernats put on it. All of a sudden, there's a powerful, powerful message there. Huge mistake made. Massive mistake. They can't deny it was said, because it's in the result. I mean, it, 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 it yeah. brought us right back to the stitchy a month or so ago about Alistair Gray, one of our most eminent, eminent writers and painters. Mm. And um, his part, the, the word colonists and settlers. But the word colony, it, it gets everybody's hackles up. Even, even an awful lot of unionists. And yet, if Scotland was extinguished in 1707, what, did, what has Scotland been since, other than a colony? So you could that would be or that could be could sway an awful lot of just rugby, rugby football, Scotland. Fans. Well, I mean, for for me, the thing I noticed was, as I say, the massive reaction to it of punters. We're not talking about people <coughs> who are part of the official Yes campaign or the Scottish government or anything else. It was people picking it to pieces. There's a thousand people out there looking at it. Oh, well, no. Maybe Whitehall only put five guys in it. You know, and that's a problem for, for the new campaign. Then they immediately go into the scaremongering. This insistence that the SNP, sorry, the Scottish Government, publish their legal advice on uh, the EU. Now, A, do they have the legal advice yet? B, have they not? Do they have no memory of the last stushy that they believe they won, and Sam and etc. have to get permission to publish that it, advice? That's true. Plus, don't forget the EU have announced quite that. Th this is definite. They have announced that they will give their opinion on Scotland's status following a yes vote, but not to Scotland. The Scottish government has to be the UK member. Well, the, 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 the UK government. Here, here's an interesting one for you. Which they've refused to, to, to ask for. Here's an interesting one for the future. They didn't actually say the UK government had to ask the question. They said the EU member. A member state yeah. has to ask okay. the question. You tend to think of another member state, not, well, not I'm, outside I'm, the UK. Well, I'm wondering where Ireland's sitting on this. There's been an awful lot of interaction between Ireland and Scotland in the last month. But Ireland, the Irish government, they desperately keep... Very good friends Difficult. with London, that's very important well, to them. Like for them to rock the boat, but who knows? Maybe the Spanish government will ask the question just because that's the shit. Well, what about looking ahead, Alice? Um, we've got a recess at the moment. I think you'll be waiting. What's coming? I think you'll be waiting, going back to Russia, I think you'll be waiting quite a while for Ireland. Uh, I mean, if you look at a lot of the problems they have in security wise and 
that in Ireland, particularly to the Border. six counties. Well, well, the north <coughs> can be traced not to England, and yet, um, and yet can be traced right back to Scotland. And yet the EU minister was prepared. Mm -hmm. That was quite bold, to diplomatically. You know, that so, I mean, for I mean, maybe they're sitting with the UK on one side of the table negotiating something else. I, I, think, I think she just clarified what she yeah. said. Anyway, because look, look both ahead. knows and yes, it's well, both played with the actuality. Looking ahead. Looking ahead. Actuality. Um, the Scottish Government issue their white paper next month, in March, which will Give become the, 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 this becomes a, a, a bill in the autumn. Yeah. And that will, first of all, give us the date for the referendum, because Salmon is not going to go back on that, he said it in the Parliament. Now that's going to fire off a huge amount of uh, interest in, in March. Maybe we need to take a holiday, because it's, March could be even more fun than this week. Well, the B... The UK government has promised what a document every month. Oh, we're going to more. They, they, that's, we do know they've got hundreds of officials ferreting away. Well, a document every all. month. <coughs> so essentially, I would expect the Scottish government to do what they did. Basically, they'll be publishing documents to coincide with that. Well, I suppose we can expect um, the No campaign to put to tear apart the white paper. What's the white paper going to say? All the white papers can say is date. That won't matter. There'll be something to matter with the date. The date will be biased. The whole lot. The whole point is they, they can't really get away from this mindset of complete negativity. I'm personalising. Mind you, I'm the last person to talk about personalising. But I'm only personalising people that are irritating because they won't be positive. I see the, uh, the Labour Party has called off a debate in because Westminster. Because whoever decides these things has decided the word separatist is pejorative. Yes. So instead of going ahead with the debate that said the post office in Scotland What was the future of the post office in Scotland? Um, they suggested. just called the debate off and blamed the SNP for calling the debate off when they called the debate off. And they've now the Labour and <laughs> Labour and Westminster have also now agreed to have another debate, and they've agreed on the, type, the title, which simply talks about post-2014. Oh, so, if a dog dies in Paris, whose fault is it? It's the SNP, yes, obviously. Right then, gentlemen, I think that was quite an interesting discussion today, and hopefully um, we have we have our own programme of uh, events coming up quite soon, but we'll leave that as we will leave the forecasting that till next week's episode. Find out what's happening on the Three Men in a Blog calendar by tuning in next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.